Anthony Joshua knocks out Francis Ngannou in the second in the second round. I'm dying to hear your thoughts here. From my perspective, it almost seemed like Francis was just completely lost. And I love Francis, but he just he had no answer. It looked like Anthony Joshua. I mean, his the boxing in comparison with Francis, he just looked like he was on several levels higher. He was getting him to bite on every feint. He was jabbing to the body, dropping his hands, then coming back up top. I mean. It was looked to me like a boxing clinic. And like I said, I love Francis, but my God, this was a complete, total whitewashing, outclassed him. And those shots he hit him with were bombs. He put everything into them. But, I mean, you know, to Francis' credit, it's only his second fight, amateur or pro in, in boxing anyway. And Anthony Joshua made it look that way. And I don't know what happened with Tyson Fury in the first fight, but that's what I thought would have happened to anyone coming into the sport and jumping right in with the heavyweight champion of the world. But I'm curious to hear from your perspective what you saw and, uh, you know, if, if we saw it similarly. First of all, hats off to Joshua and Ben Davidson, his whole team, Teddy Hearn. So does that fight end it with Fury and Ganyu and Fury and the unexpected performance of Ganyu, the good performance, drops the champion, everything. You know, he didn't win the fight, but he won the night. He won the moment. He just shocked the world in doing that. And what I saw and what I understand is the natural inclination right away, which is happening to a certain point, of people to say, wow, Joshua will kill Fury. Wow, Joshua's better. And listen, great performance. He got the job done in a, in, in a way that you want to, if you want to show that you're the much better fighter and you are the better fighter, you are an Olympic gold medalist, you are a two-time heavyweight champ, the other guy is in his second pro boxer match, you want to separate, he separated himself in the, in the proper manner with the proper statement, a loud statement, a clear statement of you shouldn't have an amateur in there with a pro of that level. But then Teddy... Why did he perform that well with Fury? Well, before I get to that, I'm going to say it's the natural inclination and reaction now for people to say, wow, wow, Joshua is, is moons above Fury. He knocked Fury out too. Look what he did to Nganyu and look Nganyu for a close, a competitive fight with him. Look at that. And I would say, I understand the human nature of doing that, but it's wrong. And I'll tell you where it's wrong. Styles make fights. And Fury's style was completely different than Joshua's style. That's number one. They, it does influence fight styles. And number two, there was something missing that this time that was there as an advantage to Nganyu the first time when he fought Fury. And that something is the element of surprise. It's a big something. It's not a little something. And, and if Fury wasn't ready physically, and he was the first time, he was, I'm making no excuses. Tremendous job by Nganyu. But he wasn't ready mentally. He wasn't. He, you couldn't be. It's almost not human to have really taking them serious enough where every fiber of your body and mind would be ready for what was coming against him. Because he, it was his first pro fight. You're the heavyweight champion of the world. You're undefeated. There's no way that you didn't take him for granted, even if you purposely didn't. Subconsciously you did. He what? And then he gets dropped, and then he's like, oh, crap. Well, we got to figure this out. And then he figures out by staying on the outside, out jabbing him, stealing rounds, because there was a lot of close rounds, a lot of non-activity rounds, and he stole the round. And when he did that, again, the style of the fight, there was no pressure on Nganyu. Nganyu was the one who actually was in charge of pushing the fight or staying outside and losing rounds to a jab, but safely losing rounds to a jab. What what I'm saying is it there's huge things to understand here, way beyond 
a great right hand crashing home for the third time on the chin of a big 270-pound muscle man and knocking him cold into tomorrow. There's more to consider if you want to consider. If you're a fan, you don't have to consider that. My man won. My man's the best. I get it. I understand, and you do deserve to relish in that. You have the right to relish in that. But I, sitting here in this chair with my leg up, which is normally not up, but it's up this time. So my foot gets circulation a little bit. I need to circulate my and continue circulating the blood in my brain <laughs> that doesn't allow me to lock into only the right hand, to, to, to bring out to everybody all the other mitigating factors that are part of this, that are involved here. The style, the element of surprise, all of that. And I'll tell you another thing. And Ganyu, as great as he was in that fight against Fury, he did just enough to lose well. I know people are going to say, now you're going on him. No, I'm not. He fought a great one. He, did, he won the night, but he lost the decision. And part of why he won the fight, they fought a smart, contained, controlled, disciplined fight, showed good technique, had their legs in position, good balance, good jab, good counter hook, you know, everything. But they did it in a very, very contained state where they did just enough not to screw it up. Enough to get a knockdown, but then not to take chances to throw a few extra punches, be a little too aggressive, and then show your shortcomings, show your lack of experience, show your lack of where you're not developed quite yet. They were able to hide that by doing just enough, just enough to have to lose well, to have a night where, wow, 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 wow. But not to win on the cards. Because if they tried to win on the cards, if they did a little bit more than they were ready to do at that point with one pro fight, they might have ran into something. They weren't ready to do that. And that allowed them to be safe. A little safer. But on this night, it was a different style. It wasn't a guy who was only throwing jabs on the outside. Now it was a guy who was set with his feet, set to punch, set to do damage to you close up. And now you didn't have the as much room to be as conservative where, or as safe. And also another thing happened, confidence to Nganyu. That hurt him in the end because now he came in thinking, okay, I can do more to try to win now. I can press this more. You know, I'm ready for this. The first time he knew what he wasn't ready for. The first time we better not do too much. We better stay contained. We better do just enough. You know, I caught it in a fight plan painting by the numbers. That the first time they painted by the numbers. Number one, red. Number two, Green, number four, orange, number five, jab, number six, right hand, number seven, body punch, number eight, left hook counter. Uh, they had the kind of pace and environment and atmosphere with the style of fury where they could color by the numbers. This time I said in the fight plan, this time was going to be different. Rather than doing things by the numbers, which was great. It worked great the first. Now they were going to have to react. Now instead of having time to think, okay, number one, this. Number two, that. Number three, that. This time they were actually going to have to react. And guess what? Two pro fights, you ain't got it down good enough to react against a former Olympic champ and two-time heavyweight champ who's been boxing most of his life or a lot longer than you have. You don't have time to just react. You haven't done it long enough to react. If the noise level gets amped up, and it did, and there's more pressure, and there was, you can't count on the reaction being right, the numbers being right. 
You can't. And that's what happened. When he had to react, what did he do? He pushed the jab from too close. Bang! Right hand. When he had to react, what did he do? He looked at the dangling left hand from Fury. Uh, I mean, from uh, uh, Joshua early on. Joshua took his left hand and he went like this. He just dangled it to the side. The first knockdown, first round. He dangled it to the side a little bit. Bang! Drew the right hand. He did what a hypnotist would do with a watch. He used his hand as the watch to mesmerize him. Look, look over here, son. <laughs> Boom! He, he wasn't, that wasn't in the number book. It wasn't in the number book. And, and, then, and then the second knockdown, what does he do? He leads with a jab right in front, like this, pushes it out. Bang! Opens the window for cold air. In this case, a cold right hand. And then the last one, well, the last one, forget about it. He's concussed. He's standing there. He's out. The referee probably should have stopped him because he probably should have looked in his eyes a little better and said, oh, my God, this guy's pupils are not dilating. He should have said, oh, my God, this guy's concussed. He's out on his feet. He's a sitting duck. He's a deer in headlights. And that's what he was. And then the right hand with everything behind it, I mean, he could he could have been badly hurt. I mean, he he was out for fifteen minutes. When I say fifteen, I don't mean un unconscious. They got him conscious in a ring, but fifteen minutes. We were sitting ringside, me and my son. We were in the second row, right there, and right there, right where his corner was actually. And when he came out of the ring, he was still gone. He still was oblivious to what was going on. He still was on another planet. He, 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 it still hadn't struck home what, you know, where he could comprehend what was going on. He was still gone. 15 minutes later. <laughs>